Hey, what's up? Tony from HowToBuyAndSellYourCars.com and today I wanted to talk to you about a couple of important things when selling cars for profit. Now, I get asked once in a while, this is not something I get asked a lot, uh, but I think it's pretty important. You know, Tony, where do you sell your cars? You know, do people, do you meet people at your house or, you know, what do you do? Well, um, you know, it can be dangerous to just have a bunch of strangers come over to your house and uh, and look at your car. You know, they're going to know exactly where you live. I mean, you know, if you have your information on the title, it'll have your address on it anyway. But most times, I recommend you to go meet people near your house. So if you live near a shopping center or someplace where there's more activity, uh, then go meet people there, you know, because it can be dangerous. Uh, true story. A couple of months ago, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe six months to a year ago, my godfather was selling a Volvo, all right, and um, he had it on Craigslist, and he got a call like at 10 o'clock p.m., some guy wanted to look at it, um, and the guy set a time for like 1 o'clock a.m. or something, so my godfather was like, serious? You really want to, and my godfather's 75 years old, right, and this is in Texas, okay, so, and this is when I wasn't living there, so he didn't have anybody to go with him, like, at that time. So he went with his wife. Uh, she's also 75. And, uh, so he goes, the guy's, like, super serious. Like, I think he took a look at it earlier that week or something, and then he just had to come up with the money or whatever. But it ended up being, like, midnight to 1 o'clock in the morning. The guy wanted to come and buy the car. So my godfather was like, are you serious? You want to come tonight? Why don't you just wait till tomorrow? But the guy was like, no, I need the car now. So uh, he was like, all right. So he, he went there and he saw the guy came with another guy. It was with, uh, it was he said he was saying it was for his wife or something. He needed to get a car quick for his wife because one of their cars broke down. So, you know, in Texas, you're allowed to carry, okay, uh, con concealed. So he had his, his license, but you can carry a, a gun in your car in Texas if you have a, a license. So, you know, as soon as he got there to meet the guy, he says, listen, I, I have a, a pistol on me if you try to do anything funny. I ha I'm packing. The guy was like, all right, no, I'm fine. I'm just, I just want to buy the car. So they actually did the deal. Uh, they met somewhere. It wasn't at his house. My godfather they didn't want anybody coming over to the house at that time or anything like that. They met at a shopping mall lot or something like that, uh, like five to ten miles away from the house. Uh, and they closed the deal. It was really weird. Um... It's just weird things happen like that. So, you know, it's a different story if you go meet a potential buyer uh, at a shopping mall one day and they're like, yeah, I want to buy. And you, you know the person, she seems like a family person or a family guy and a nice person. You know that they're okay uh, and they want to pick you up. They want to actually pick it up at another time. You could say, yeah, you could come over to my house to give them the address and you could transact a couple of deals that way. And, and I've done that many times. I've sold cars at... Uh, shopping centers or gas stations and ask them to uh, just take me home because I don't have a ride. You know, instead of calling uh, a friend or my wife to come and pick me up, which I've done a lot as well, sometimes I'll just say, hey, can you just drop me off at home? You know, if, if I know the person is a good person and, uh, you know, not a weirdo or anything like that, then, you know, most times they're like, yeah, yeah, why not? You know, they, and then they drive you home, drop you off, and then this way you don't have to worry about transportation to your house, right? Um, and of course, if you're doing that, you don't want to be selling shady cars, right? Obviously, if you're selling a car with a problem or something, you, you don't want to have the guy take you home, you know, and then th break down on the way or, you know, whatever. You just, the, the, the end point is, you know, sell good cars, you know, create win-win situations, sell a good car so you don't have to worry about it about the person calling you up after a week or 10 days or breaking down on the road and calling you back. You know, you don't want to sell cars that you spruced up for the time being and, and you know something's going to go wrong with it a week to 10 days from now, you know, or even two, three days after you sell it. You know, so that's that puts yourself at ease a little bit more when you sell good cars. You don't have to worry about it. You know, oh man, he got a deal on the car, I made money uh, and the deal is gone. So. Uh, those kind of things like that. So, you know, I recommend, you know, meeting people at other places first. And then if you have to get a ride home, if you feel that that person's cool and not a weirdo or anything, they can drop you off home. 
or if you've met the person before and they, they have the money, they need to go get the money and, and meet you at another time, like at the, the same time, you know, at that day at another time or a couple days down the road, um, you could say, hey, just come over to my house, you know, you know where my address is on, on the title and everything and, uh, and you can close the deal that way. So it's just, you know, if you, it's, it all depends if you're, what kind of neighborhood you're in as well. You know, if you're in a kind of ghetto-ish neighborhood, a rough neighborhood, uh, you may not want to have everybody come over to your house, you know, like I said. So take these tips um, and use them because it's uh, very important. You don't want weirdos to know where you live and just having a whole bunch of people come over to your house to take a look at a car. I recommend, you know, meeting people a few miles out nearest gas station or shopping mall just to show the car. And if they seem interested and they seem like a nice person, then uh, if you have to, you can um, you know, close the deal at a later time. Or most times you close the deal at that place, you know. Then you could have a friend pick you up and take you home or catch the cab home, whatever you want to do, you know. So that's how I, uh, I do it and that's how I recommend to do it. It's Tony from HowToBuyAndSellYourCars.com. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, if this is your first time watching my video, subscribe, like, and share, and also hit up the website howtobuyandsellyourcars.com to get a free manual on how you can learn how to flip it, flip cars for profit, uh, make extra money, um, you know, during hard times or whatever, because it's it's always nice to be able to find a deal, know what to do to spruce it up, negotiate a better deal, even if it's listed as a good deal, resell it and make, you know, one, two, three thousand dollars profit whenever you want to. And uh, a lot of people do it and a lot of people do it and they mess up. They lose their shirt when starting out, especially at auctions, uh, because there's just so many people bidding on it and, and you don't know exactly what you're getting at auctions most of the time. All right. So it's Tony. Subscribe, uh, like the video, comment, and I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to hit up the website to get your free report on how you can start buying and selling cars. Uh, yourself. Have a great day. Bye.